Hi there, my name is Jason Perkins. I'd like to welcome you to another episode in my Georgia Workers' Compensation video series. I'm an attorney who specializes in handling Georgia Workers' Compensation cases. I created this series of videos because I want to provide people who have been hurt at work with helpful information about Georgia's Workers' Compensation Law and the benefits they should receive under that law. Today, I'd like to talk with you about workers' compensation herniated disc surgeries. Now, if your workers' compensation doctor has recommended a surgery to repair a herniated disc in your neck or back, you may have questions. One of the first questions you may have is, does workers' compensation have to pay for herniated disc surgeries? The answer is sometimes they do. Um, so in Georgia, workers' compensation has to pay for medical treatment and testing that you need for your injury if that medical treatment and testing meets four different factors. Um, the first is it's being provided by an authorized workers' compensation doctor. The second is that it's reasonable and necessary. The third is that it's related to your injury. And the fourth is that it's within the time limit that applies in your particular workers' compensation case. So different workers' compensation cases have different time limits that apply for medical treatment. Um, your medical treatment testing should be up to 400 weeks from your accident. In some cases, it could be past that, um, meaning that that 400-week limit may not apply if your case qualifies for a catastrophic designation or some other exceptions. But many cases are limited to medical treatment and testing being within 400 weeks of when your injury occurred as far as workers' compensation's responsibility for it. Now, why would a workers' compensation insurance company choose to deny payment for a hernia disc surgery? Well, it could be because you're not seeing an authorized doctor, um, but that's usually not the case. Normally, you're treating with a doctor, it's being paid under workers' compensation, the doctor recommends the surgery, and then the insurance company may still deny it. And this normally happens for one of two reasons. Um, the first is that the insurance company is contending that the treatment is not related to your workers' compensation injury. Now, why would they contend that? Well, often they try to argue that you had some pre-existing condition or some prior injury. And that pre-existing condition or prior injury is causing the need for the surgery. Um, this happens a lot when you've got some prior treatment for your neck or back. Maybe you've been involved in a car wreck or a worker's compensation injury before, or just seen a chiropractor or another doctor and had some treatment for neck or back pain. Um, if this happens, don't be surprised if the workers' compensation insurance company tries to argue about their responsibility to pay for that surgery that the doctor recommends. Now, another reason the insurance company may choose to deny your surgery is that they're contending that the surgery is not reasonable and necessary, even though your workers' compensation doctor is recommending it. They will still make this argument sometimes. Um, they may send you to another doctor for a second opinion. Hope they can get a doctor to say that you don't really need the surgery. It's not the best alternative as far as treatment options. And then try to deny payment of the surgery based on that opinion from the other doctor. Um, now, if the insurance company denies payment for the surgery, are there things that you can do to get the surgery approved? Uh, yes, there are things that either you or an attorney representing you can do to get surgery approved if the insurance company denies it. Um, there's different methods for approaching it. Um, one method is filing a form WCPMT, um, which is a form published by the Georgia State Board of Workers' Compensation um, that basically requests the insurance company to either approve or deny a surgery or sets up a phone call with a judge to talk about whether the surgery should be approved or denied. A second method is to file a motion. Um, with a workers' compensation judge. Um, with a the motion, there's a written argument called a brief that's filed arguing why the surgery should be approved. And then there's evidence support, submitted with that motion as well. So generally medical records, information that the doctors um, completed about your injury and whether, why you need the surgery. Um, the insurance company will have an opportunity to object to that motion. And then a judge will review information from both sides and make a decision. The third method is requesting a hearing about the surgery. Um, if this is done eventually after the discovery process, um, then eventually the, uh, there'll be a hearing held in front of a workers' compensation judge. Evidence is presented by both sides, and after the hearing, 
the judge will make a decision about whether the insurance company has to pay for the surgery or not. Um, now these three different methods have different pros and cons. Some are quicker than others, um, but some may provide a better opportunity for winning and getting the surgery approved. Um, the best method to pursue is going to really depend on the specific facts of your case and your particular situation. Um, I hope you found this information about workers' compensation hernia and disc surgeries helpful. If you have, please let me know that. One of the best ways you can do that is by liking this video or giving it a thumbs up. If you've got more questions about Georgia workers' compensation law or need help with getting a workers' compensation hernia and disc surgery approved, um, please reach out and schedule a free consultation about your case. Um, there's two easy ways that you can do that. The first is by calling the phone number at the bottom of the screen, and the other is by reaching out to us to our website, which is www.perkinslawtalk.com. Just click on and submit the free consultation request form, and a member of our team will reach out to you and get that consultation scheduled. I'd like to thank you again for watching this video today. I want to wish you the best of luck as you recover from your injuries.